Hello everyone, amateur meteorologist. First, the weather here. It is July 23rd, 2019, and uh, we just had a nice cold front come through. And so you'll notice that the uh, the uh, pictures that I have here are from the previous day. This is from the 12Z run. These are from the 12Z runs, and that's because I had some audio issues yesterday, so I really couldn't uh, record my videos properly. So I just stuck with the same presentation. Uh, and it is a day. Uh, it is a day late, but most of the content and the meaning is still pretty much the same. One thing you might have noticed is I'm recording this as a PowerPoint presentation. It's a new form of present presenting that I'm trying out. Uh, I'm trying it out because I think it will help me get more uh, control with my forecast and I'll be able to plan ahead and have everything ordered out so I can make my forecast more concise and also better for the user. And one thing you might have noticed is I have gotten my own um, little logo right here. If I can get my laser pointer out with this PowerPoint. Got my own little logo. It is a little uh, crude, to say the least, um, but I did design it, and I will be making some improvements to it in the future as I expand or uh, make my first and weather company brand more professional, so to so to speak. But anyways, well, let's get right into the video. So this was from yesterday. We had a big, we had a nice strong cold front uh, in the eastern United States, and we had some big storms in the Northeast and the Mid Atlantic. And that cold front then overnight passed through Virginia, North Carolina. It then stalled uh, near the uh, Virginia Beach area along that line, somewhat like this. Let me draw my pen out real quick. It, it significantly slowed down right around here. And so today, Tuesday, you had a dome of cold, cool, much below average temperatures in this area right here, as you had the as you had rainfall behind that front. Um, and you had much cooler temperatures near the coast. It was in the 80s, but just behind that cold front, it was in the 60s, uh, and it was unusually cool. I think in Richmond, Virginia, it was the coolest day in the coolest daytime high in Richmond's climatological history for July 23rd. So it really uh, just shows you how cool it was. And many areas did actually pick up um, half an inch to even two inches of rainfall in western North North Carolina and central Virginia. So anyways, this cold front did bring a nice, um, well-welcomed cool down um, for the eastern United States, uh, the southeast and the northeast, and even the Midwest. Um, and so now as we go down, this is a GIF of the upper level, the geopotential height. Um, this is a GFS 12Z again, 12Z July 22nd, 2019 run. And as you can see, as that cold front passes through, we have a deep trough, unusually deep trough for June or July, that is, rather that is. Uh, usually in July you don't really see troughs this pronounced. The jet stream is not usually this wavy. Uh, it's more of a flat flow, meridional flow. Uh, not, it becomes more wavy as we head into the fall months and it starts to fluctuate more. Usually in the summer the jet stream is uh, well north like this. It's more flat, uh, but not the case right now. Uh, anyways though, as you can see, this, this trough is pretty deep, but it is short-lived. It quickly breaks down by the end of the week around Friday, July 26th. And by Saturday, uh, most areas east of the Mississippi should be back to seeing seasonal summer-like conditions with uh, elevated humidity uh, and uh, temperatures in the upper 80s to lower 90s, or essentially temperatures that are near average for your area. Now, one thing I wanted to show you guys was the relative humidity. I thought this was really cool. You can just really see the extent of this dry air mass, and uh, as you can, let me wait, wait for the GIF to reload. Uh, let's see, one second. All right, so as you can see, that cold front passed through really high humidity levels, and that nice dry air mass right behind it, really crashing eastward, and that dry air still remains in place for quite a while actually before it finally starts to collapse and we start to see a return of humidity at the end of this week and the start of next week. So this again just goes to show uh, how cold, or not how cold, but how dry and pleasant this air mass is going to be for the next couple of days. Uh, today was the first day. Wednesday and Thursday will be very nice. Low humidity, sunny skies in the uh, eastern U.S. And this will really make it feel like early fall for many locations. This is the GEF ensemble model for forecast hour 114 of 12Z. Of the 12Z run, so this is July 27th, uh, and as you can see, the model is trying to sh uh, show quite a bit of ridging in the western United States, with another ridge in the northeast, and so this is 
more or less a typical summer pattern where we would expect with this uh, if this model run if this model verifies we would see uh, above average temperatures in the west and seasonal uh, temperatures in the southeast with above average temperatures in the northeast a few days forward august 1st that ridge expands slightly northward expands slightly nor northward and um, intensifies slightly uh, in the west or actually no, weaken slightly and we still would have these warmer than average temperatures right here then we have another ridge right here and so i think there could be the potential for quite a few storms actually in this area uh, august 1st and there could be a severe weather outbreak just a hunch as if you think about it we're going to have winds coming like this so relatively cool and dry air and then we have moist we have lots of moisture and warm southwesterly winds coming like coming like this way and you know what happens when we have lots of wind shear and changes in wind direction we have uh, conditions that are primed for severe weather and tornadoes so it's going to be interesting to see it's not a uh, it's just a hunch but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we have quite a few severe storms near August 1st uh, if this model run verifies now this is uh, August 4th, so that ridge is still in place in the west. We still have that that dome of high pressure keeping temperatures a little warmer than normal in the western United States, if not well above, uh, pretty good above normal. And in the east, we generally uh, are seeing seasonal temperatures as, a, as that ridge really isn't dominating the east, but we don't really have any uh, tropping features to keep things below average. So more or less things will be seasonal, seasonal east of the Mississippi. Now finally, August 7th, the GEFS tries to hint at some sort of troughing in the east. You can see that slight dip um, like this, but really it doesn't look, like, doesn't look too great, and the models do have a tendency to overdo things uh, as you get further out. But as you can see, that ridge still is in place in the west, so um, the western United States will see uh, above average temperatures or so for the next uh, two weeks. Um, and they have been seeing a very cool summer over the past few weeks so this will be a welcome change for some and now as we go to the EPS which is the European Ensemble model this is for July 29th and the GEFS I showed you was this is August 1st if we go to the European we can see that things are quite similar we have a little bit of troughing uh, in the northern states with ridging right here and ridging in the east so as you can see uh, things are quite similar it also does have uh, oh, sort of does have that wind shear environment here um, and as the, as the Bermuda High then takes shape right here. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.